Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19, we read responsibly. What shall I render the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please rise. When you woke that Thursday
Mark chapter 14, verses 22 through 26. And when they ate, having took bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And having taken the cup, giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, that never again will I drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I will drink it new in the kingdom of God. And having sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, why is this night different from all other nights? That is the crucial question that is asked by the youngest member of the family at the Passover meal. What makes this night significant? It is the meal when they celebrate the people of Israel coming out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery, by the almighty, powerful hand of God. This is the night they celebrate. They celebrate God's salvation to them from slavery to freedom. It is a significant meal for them. And it is the meal that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ celebrated with his disciples hours before he would be put on trial. So Jesus and his disciples gathered together in the upper room and it is there when Jesus proceeds to give to us today another significant meal. He takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to the disciples and says, this is my body. He then takes the cup, giving thanks, and he gives it to them all to drink. And he says, this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. This is a significant meal. And it is not a matter of what we are actually doing here. It's a matter of what we are receiving here. We are receiving the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The very body and blood of our God, who created us, who redeemed us from our sins, and gives us everlasting life. Yes, meals are important to us as human beings. Bread and water, food and drink, they are what keep us alive upon the face of this earth. And we remember who it is that gives these things to us. It is our almighty, powerful God. So we receive this evening, once again, bread and wine. We receive in with and under that bread, his body, given for us in the death for the forgiveness of our sins. We will receive in his blood poured out for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And in this significant meal, our sins are forgiven. Yes, all the times we take this meal for granted, all the times we go through the motion, receiving the bread and the body of the Lord and the blood and the wine of the Lord, when we take it for granted, not even thinking about it, it is forgiven. Our God covers our sins with his blood. A significant meal for us this evening. As we contemplate our Lord's passion, his suffering, his death, for us, that we are now his people. As we will once again hear the words of the Old Testament reading, which are sounding quite strange to our ears, people living in the Western Hemisphere, people living in the 21st century, we will hear those words of Moses and the people of Israel at the time of the sacrifice. He will read the words of the covenant with the people, and the people will respond, we will obey everything you say to us. And then he takes the blood of that sacrifice. Half of it he puts in basins. 
and the other half he throws upon the altar. Seems like a gored, horrid mess. But that blood that's in the basins, when the people agree with that covenant, it seems to us the strangest thing that Moses does. He takes the blood in that basins and he throws it upon the people. Signifying the covenant that God has with us by the shedding of blood, the forgiveness of sins. For us this evening, we will receive our Lord's body in, with, and under that bread. And we'll receive our Lord's blood in, with, and under that wine to give us forgiveness of our sins and strength for a holy life. For a life not taking him for granted. A life in praise and glory for him and him alone. A significant meal indeed. As we hear the words of Jesus say that this was the last time that he will partake of this meal with his disciples. Yet he will drink it again and eat it again. New in the kingdom of God. And it brings us also to the Old Testament lesson once again. When the Moses and the children of Israel, the elders of the people, go up and see God face to face. And it is there they have a significant meal. A reminder to us, as people under his new covenant, people under the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that God grants us forgiveness of our sins through his death upon the cross and through his resurrection grants us everlasting life. That significant meal, or may I say this significant meal today, we will receive to strengthen our faith in the hope, in the assurance of everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading from Exodus, chapter 24. 
Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate, and drank. The epistle from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread.
Please rise. Holy Gospel of our Lord, Mark chapter 14, beginning with the 14th verse. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a water, jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as is, is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we offer to you our common supplications for the well-being of your Holy Church throughout the world and for this congregation gathered in your name. Guide and govern your church by your Holy Spirit, that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the truth in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. As your Son, our Lord Jesus, commanded us, Enable us to love one another in sincerity and in truth. Be merciful to all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Preserve all who travel. Satisfy the wants of your creatures and help those who call upon you in any need that they may have patience in the midst of suffering and according to your will be released from their afflictions. We praise you for the abundant mercy that you so richly have provided us, blessing us not only with daily bread for our bodies, but also with heavenly food for our souls. Grant that your living and powerful word abide in our hearts. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Deliver and preserve us in the saving faith, and grant your blessing upon us all, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to his testament in true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which he presents to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. 
that you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he, saved, that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood, and that you then externally receive the bread and the wine, that is, his body and blood, as a guarantee and as a pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command, and with his own words, administer and receive the testament. At this time, open up your container. And then we will hear the words of our Lord instituting our Lord's Supper. And then we will partake all together. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When given thanks, he broke it, gave the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also to the cup after supper, when he given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is new testament my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as often you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in the true faith and life everlasting. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
we read responsibly Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust at your mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the afflicted of the affliction, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. <laughs> 